This video will provide an overview of the procedure that must be followed to install and synchronize the injection pumps on the 2.4 liter and 3.0 liter engines. Before beginning the procedure, prepare the vehicle. Refer to the vehicle technical manual to access the engine. Thoroughly clean the engine area of all dirt and debris. Remove the rocker arm cover and clean the mating surfaces, taking care that no debris falls into the intake and rocker arm cavity. Ensure the glow plug wiring harness is removed. Note that the rocker arm assembly does not have to be removed. If it is, the hydraulic lifters will need to be bled down. Before removing the injection nozzles, note the location of the fuel injection components in the engine. Each injection nozzle and injection pump must be reinstalled in the same location. Begin by removing the injection nozzle hold down clamp cap screw. Loosen the injection nozzle line nut from the pressure relief valve with a 17 millimeter flare nut socket. To keep the pump from moving, use the JDG 1854 wrench to hold the injection pump pressure relief fitting while turning the nut. Remove the injection nozzle from the cylinder head with the JDG 1822 injector puller. If the intake rocker arm is down, you must turn the engine over to bring it to the up position to allow the removal of the injection nozzle. Now remove the washer and carbon stop seal from the nozzle. Install a new washer and carbon seal using the installation tool provided with the seal. Now you must remove the injection pumps. To do so, loosen all pump clamp cap screws three complete turns. Leave the clamps in place for now. Slowly rotate the crankshaft to push the pumps past the O-rings. As soon as each pump rises, remove the injection pump clamp. Remove the pump carefully, making sure you do not rotate it in the process. Place each pump on a clean bench and mark its location so it can be returned to the same position. The pump clamp screws can be discarded at this point. Now you can replace the O-rings. Note the O-ring color for upper and lower locations and be sure the shims don't fall off the pump during this process. The fuel pump has scribe marks on both the fuel pump and the fuel control arm clamp. This mark has been put on by the pump supplier when setting fuel delivery for the pump system. Verify the alignment of the scribe marks on the pump body and fuel control arm clamp. Misalignment will cause inadequate fuel delivery and poor engine performance. The next step is to adjust the fuel control rack magnet. Begin by removing the governor access cover from the timing gear cover, then cleaning the mating surfaces. Pull back the electric solenoid shutoff lever and gently push on the fuel control rack. The rack must move freely without binding. Position the solenoid shutoff lever fully forward and secure with plastic tie bands. Loosen the rack magnet adjusting screw jam nut, then turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise one to two turns. Now place and hold a bent 1 mm .039 inch feeler gauge between the governor lever roller and the fuel control rack plate surface, keeping it flush with the rack plate. Now slowly turn the magnet adjusting screw clockwise until the governor lever roller contracts the feeler gauge with no play. Do not push the control rack out of its maximum forward position. Holding the magnetic adjusting screw in position, tighten the jam nut. Next, you'll need to ensure that the fuel control rack travel is within specifications. To get this measurement, begin by installing special tool JDG2073 across the governor opening using the governor cover cap screw. The notch in the top of the base will position the base with the pin bushing for the proper alignment. When you install the measuring base, finger tighten the cap screw, then tighten the cap screw to 3.4 newton meters, 30 inch pounds. Insert the pin through the bushing and look inside to see that the contact pin has made contact with the rack plate below the lip. Now push the rack into the cylinder block until it stops. Lock the collar in position. Now withdraw the pin and measure the distance using a vernier caliper. Allow the rack to move out of the cylinder block until it stops, making sure the electric shutoff lever is not in contact with the rack plate. Gently insert the pin through the bushing until it makes contact with the rack plate, then measure this distance with the pin, locking collar, and vernier caliper. To calculate the total rack travel, subtract the smaller measurement from the larger. 
If the total is between 21 and 21.75 millimeters, 0.827 and 0.856 inches, proceed with installing the pump unit and remove the measuring tool. If not, additional investigation is required to determine if debris or a damaged fuel rack guide might be preventing full travel. We're almost ready to begin, but first note that the injection pump unit, camshaft follower, and nozzle are calibrated and installed as a matched unit. Mixing these components will result in excessive variation in fuel delivery and injection timing, so make sure the pump unit you install is a matched set before proceeding to the next cylinder. Also note that if the rocker arm assembly was removed, the hydraulic lifters must be bled down. Refer to the valve train instructions to ensure that cam followers and valve train components are properly installed. Now you're ready to begin the installation and synchronization process. Start by using special tool JDG1704, the flywheel turning tool, to rotate the engine flywheel in running direction, clockwise as viewed from the front. Rotate until the number one piston, the one closest to the engine mounted fan, is at TDC number one on the exhaust stroke. Install special tool JDE81-4 on the timing pin at the rear right hand side of the cylinder block. The injection pump must be installed when the camshaft pump follower is at the lowest position on the camshaft base circle and seated properly in the follower bore. This can be visually confirmed by observing the movement of the camshaft follower in relation to the cylinder block casting as the crankshaft is turned. Please note that when installing the injection pump into the cylinder block, the control arm pin must be aligned into the fuel rack groove. Do not apply excessive pressure to force engagement. Lubricate the O-rings with Parker O-Lube, carefully avoiding getting excess lubricant on the fuel inlet screen. Note that when installing the number one pump, the fuel control rack should be positioned as far into the rear of the cylinder block as possible. All other pumps will be installed with the fuel control rack in the most forward position out of the cylinder block. Now install the pump into the engine block, making sure the fuel control arm is engaged in the rack notch. If the fuel control rack doesn't move when you take your hand away, it has been properly engaged. Verify by turning the pump and noting the movement of the fuel rack. Apply clean engine oil to the new pump clamp cap screw and tighten finger tight to ensure the pump is properly seated. Using the torque wrench, slowly rotate the pump counterclockwise as viewed from the top of the engine until you see the fuel control rack stop moving forward out of the cylinder block and a value of 3.4 newton meters, or 30 inch pounds, is indicated. Tighten the number one clamp to 50 newton meters, or 37 foot pounds. Then loosen it and retighten to 6.2 newton meters, or 55 inch pounds. Install the retaining pin from Special Tool JDG10245 into the fuel control rack spring pin. It won't be necessary to push the rack spring back to insert the tool in the spring pin, the tool can be engaged through the rack spring. Now install Special Tool JDG10245 across the governor opening. The notch in the top of the base will position the gauge bushing, thus guiding the dial indicator extension onto the fuel control rack plate and allowing the threaded retaining pin to protrude through the hole in the base. Tighten the clamp cap screw to 3.4 newton meters, 30 inch pounds. Be sure the base is torqued to 30 inch pounds each time to avoid fluctuations in rack travel measurement. This applies to both the JDG10245 and the JDG2073. Caution: You must make sure the rack retaining pin is slowly pulled straight forward without rotation so no bending or twisting force is applied to the rack. Now place the tapered spring over the pin with the larger diameter and against the base. Install and tighten the knurled nut until the spring is compressed to approximately half the original spring length. Next, install the indicator bushing into the base. Then install the proper extension onto the dial indicator. Slide the dial indicator into the bushing until the extension contacts the fuel control rack plate. Continue to slide the indicator into the bushing for one half to three quarter turns of the pointer and then tighten the thumb screw. Visually confirm that the indicator extension is contacting below the rack plate lip and that it moves freely. Rotate the number one pump clockwise, roughly 10 to 15 degrees, then stop. The number one pump will not be clocked at this time, but turn the indicator dial face until the pointer is on zero. 
Please note that to minimize fuel control rack deflection, injection pumps are synchronized in sequence from the rear of the engine to the front. Also, if the follower isn't down, rotate the engine to put it in the down position. Now move to the rear and lubricate the rear pump O-rings with Parker O-Lube, carefully avoiding getting excess lubricant on the fuel inlet screen. Visually verify that the fuel control arm is engaged in the rack notch, then apply clean engine oil to the new pump clamp cap screw and tighten to spec, 50 newton meters or 37 foot-pounds, to ensure proper seating. Next, loosen the pump clamp cap screw and retighten to spec, 6.2 newton meters or 55 inch pounds, in order to take up the shim pack clearance and ensure that the pump remains fully seated while allowing pump rotation without excess friction. The dial indicator pointer should be at zero. If not, reset accordingly. Slowly rotate the injection pump counterclockwise until you can see the groove in the control arm open slightly. Now, slowly rotate the injection pump clockwise as viewed from the top of the engine until the indicator pointer moves off zero, roughly 0.38 to 0.25 millimeters or 0 0.01 to 0 0.015 inches. Rotate the pump in both directions and observe the dial indicator to ensure unrestricted smooth indicator pointer movement. If movement is restricted or irregular, check dial indicator extension for binding. Now rotate the pump counterclockwise until the pointer stops moving. The pointer should now be at zero. If not, reset accordingly. Next, slowly rotate the pump clockwise until the dial indicator pointer has moved 0 0.025 millimeters or 0 0.001 inches. If the indicator moves more than this distance, slowly rotate the pump back until the pointer is at zero. Reset the pump by slowly rotating it clockwise until the pointer has moved 0 0.025 millimeters or 0 0.001 inches. Tighten the injection pump clamp cap screw to 50 newton meters, 37 foot pounds. Observe the dial indicator pointer while tightening the clamp cap screw. Rack movement of 0 0.0127 millimeters or 0 0.0005 inches in either direction is acceptable. If the rack movement exceeds that distance, loosen the pump clamp cap screw to 6.2 newton meters, 55 inch pounds, and begin the pump rotation process over. Reset the dial indicator face to zero. To ensure that each injection pump camshaft follower is on the base circle during pump rotation, remove the timing pin and rotate the crankshaft as described in the following steps. On a four-cylinder engine with the number one pump in place, rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees in the direction of engine rotation. Install and synchronize the number four and number three pumps, then rotate the crankshaft another 360 degrees. Install the number two pump, then synchronize the number two and number one pumps. For a five-cylinder engine, with the number one pump in place, rotate the crankshaft 540 degrees in the direction of engine rotation, one and a half complete turns. Install and synchronize the number five, number four, and number three pumps. Rotate the crankshaft another 360 degrees, install the number two pump, then synchronize the number two and number one pumps. Move forward to the next cylinder. Repeat these steps to install and synchronize the remaining injection pumps. Remove the measuring tools, pull the electric shutoff solenoid lever forward, and check to ensure free rack movement. Now you'll need to remeasure the fuel control rack travel. Install special tool JDG2073 across the governor opening, then tighten the clamp cap screw to 3.4 newton meters, 30 inch pounds. With the electric shutoff solenoid lever pulled forward, measure the distance to the rack in the front and rear. Record these measurements and subtract to determine the total rack travel. Make a note of the result. Compare this new result with the measurement recorded when the pumps were not installed. The difference between the two measurements should be within specs, 0 0.203 millimeters or 0 0.008 inches. If it isn't, the pumps will need to be reset. Now apply a continuous 2 to 4 millimeter, 0 0.08 through 0.16 inch bead of PM710XX280 silicone sealant to the mounting surface of the governor cover. Install, making sure all sealing surfaces are clean and free of oil. Tighten cap screw to specs, 14 newton meters 
or 10 foot-pounds. Now it's time to install the injection nozzles. Please note, each injection nozzle and injection pump must be reinstalled in their original location. Using thumb pressure only, insert the injection nozzle into the cylinder head bore while aligning the end of the line with the pump pressure relief fitting. Do not tap or hammer the nozzle into the bore. It will be seated properly when the clamp is tightened. Start the injection nozzle line nut on the injection pump pressure relief fitting. Now apply clean engine oil to the nozzle hold down clamp cap screw and tighten to specs. 27 newton meters or 20 foot pounds. Hold the injection pump in position with special tool JDG1854 to prevent rotation. Then tighten the injection nozzle line nut using a 17 millimeter flare nut socket to specs. 30 newton meters or 23 foot pounds. If you follow the procedures outlined in this video, the installation of the injection pumps and the synchronization process should be successful.